Are you one of the small business owners squeezed by large corporations that can invest millions into technology? In this video, I will show you one app that would allow you to compete with them. And that's the thing. You will only need one app because this app replaces Excel, PowerPoint, Word, OneNote, OneDrive, SharePoint, PDF Viewer, and a lot of other functionality. And this app comes from one of the most reputable vendors in IT industry. And best of all, the basic version of this app is absolutely free. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. Most of my career, I worked as a consultant helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in a community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. As you might have guessed, the name of this app is Microsoft Teams. And in this video, I will do a quick overview of the app and we will do all the tasks you need to do as a small business. We will embed strategy PDF file into the application. I will show you how to do request for proposal using built-in Word. We will do project planning and task management using integration with Asana. I'll show you how to do effective meetings using built-in OneNote. We will create vendor presentation using built-in version of PowerPoint and we will manage project risks using built-in version of Microsoft Excel. If you need to jump to one particular topic, make sure to use the table of content for this video we put together in the description. And now, let's go ahead and get started with the quick overview of the application. Microsoft Teams is a collaboration and organizational tool from Microsoft that allows you to dramatically improve your productivity as an individual as well as in the team environment. What you see on the screen is how brand new account looks when you create a new account on teams.microsoft.com. Microsoft Teams is available for the desktop, for the web, and for the mobile devices. Microsoft Teams user interface consists of seven main areas. All of these areas are available on every platform, desktop, mobile, and the web. Your user profile information is available in the upper right corner. If you click on the icon, which could be replaced by your picture, you can set your status, you can manage settings, you can manage the org, download apps, and do a lot of other things. Microsoft Teams provides you with the very powerful search capabilities. In the search bar, you can look for messages, files, or use team commands to get quick access to specific functions of Microsoft Teams. You can switch between different functions of Microsoft Teams using Tabs menu. There are six main tabs that exist in the default installation of Teams. You can switch between Activity, Chat, Teams, meetings, calls, files, and you can also customize the section based on your needs. One of the most important areas is the sections area. Sections area is located next to the tabs. In sections area, you have access to different functions based on the tab that you selected. And you have access to the section functions at the top and at the bottom of the section. For example, I'm on the Teams tab. Teams tab has its own section here. On the top of the Teams section, you have filtering options. Because this is a brand new installation of Teams, I don't have any Teams created yet. But at the bottom of this section, you can invite other people or you can join or create new team. Next to the Sections area, you have Stream and Feed area. This is the Stream and Feed area right here. And in this area, you see the results of the conversations, you see collaboration on particular items, and you see a lot of other things based on what is selected currently. We do not have anything in this section right now because this is a brand new installation, but we are about to change that. And last but not least is the apps area, which is located in the bottom left corner. In the apps section, you can add additional apps to Microsoft Teams, or you can download the desktop version of Microsoft Teams. There are multiple ways how you can create a new team. If you don't have any teams set up, you will see this create new team area right here. An alternative way to create a new team would be join or create team in the bottom area of the screen. I'm going to click join or create team right here and click create team 
and I will choose build the team from scratch because I am working with Patricia on our YouTube video marketing project for our flagman product. I'm going to click build new team and this is going to be a public team. On this screen, I can give team a name and my name will be YouTube marketing video creation for our flagman product. I'll use the same description for this team. And as a last step, I'll click create. There will be two members in this team, Patricia and myself. Because I'm already in the system, I need to invite Patricia so she can join the team. I will be able to do it on the add team member screen. You can invite anybody in the world who has email address. I'm going to type Patricia's email and I'm going to click add. On the next screen, I will define Patricia's role. She can be an owner of the team and member. I'm going to leave her as member, which is a default choice. And then click close. We are very lucky because we have access to Patricia's email account. Patricia received an email. And via email, she can click Join Teams button. Before accepting the invitation, you have opportunity to review security settings. Patricia is okay with security settings and she clicks Accept. After Patricia accepted, she now has access to the team within Microsoft Teams. One of the biggest challenges Microsoft Teams solves, it allows me to create contained environment to communicate with coworkers. We can manage projects together. We can manage resources like files, images, or anything else, or any other electronic documents. We can also manage activities together and invite other individuals and groups into our collaborative workspace. I have discussed with my boss, John, and now our effort is formalized into project. John suggested to call this project Video for Flagman Product. And John suggested that there are at least two important parts in this project. The first part is to create the video, and then the second part is to market the video. Microsoft Teams provides you with exceptional capabilities to edit anything you would like to edit. I have initially created our team with the different name. Now I am going to come here and edit the name. To do that, I need to click on these three dots and click Edit Team. Here, I can just enter a different name based on what my manager suggested. Based on what John suggested, I'm also going to create two channels for my team. You use the same interface to create a channel. The first channel I'm going to create is Create Video. Because we're a manufacturing company and do not have any video creation capabilities, we need to identify the vendor and work with external vendor to create a new video. I'll choose standard privacy here because at some point we may need to invite representatives from this vendor to help us manage this particular stream. One thing I'd like to point out here is that for every team you create, there is a general channel, which you cannot delete. Every team has a general channel, and the new channel I created shows up right under the general channel. My boss also suggested that we may need to market the video with the different company. We already have a relationship with existing marketing company, and we might want to use them to market that particular video, and include the video on the website, and use some other marketing mechanisms to promote it. Based on this information, I am going to go ahead and create another channel. I was about to click Add button, but I received a call from Patricia. Let's quickly switch to Patricia's view and what she can see. Patricia received a new channel information. She didn't know that I'm creating additional channels. So at first, it showed up as a hidden channel for her. So she just asked me what is going on. And I had to explain her that I had discussion with John and I explained her what I'm doing. While having her on the call, I also wanted to make sure that this new channel that I'm creating is not hidden for Patricia. So I decided to check this box, which will automatically show this channel to everyone's channel list. And after that, I'm clicking Add. Now, instead of being hidden channel on Patricia's list, it is open channel for Patricia. I'm working on the project with Patricia together and we're using Microsoft Teams. Because we are new and don't know much about the system, I have recently noticed that Patricia's profile shows up in the system as online training user. I captured the screen print of this and decided to share this information with Patricia. We've already exchanged some messages with Patricia before, so I decided to use the general channel and start a new conversation. This is what I wrote. Hi Patricia, hope all is well. Just noticed that your profile may not be updated in the system. This is how I see it. I just thought I would let you know. And I pasted the image of what I saw when I tried to search for Patricia. And then I clicked post. When Patricia saw this message, she was very surprised because she didn't know how her information shows up in the system. So she decided to thank me for sharing this information. And she used one of the features. When you hover over the post, you have access to some of the cool responses. So she decided to use this one. 
as that was something best represented her emotional state at the moment. She also decided to go ahead and change her profile. To do that, she clicked on the profile picture in the upper right corner and clicked edit profile. In addition to typing her name, she decided to upload the picture. Once she uploaded her picture, all she needed to do is to click save button. The changes didn't show up immediately in the web version that she was using, so she decided to click refresh. And she was happy she did, because now her picture showed up in the upper right corner. She decided to write me back and thank me for that. But before doing that, she decided to check how Vadim's profile shows up in the system. To do that, she typed at and started typing Vadim. She realized that Vadim doesn't have his picture uploaded either. And she decided to add some humor into her message. She wrote, thank you for letting me know. Make sure you update your profile as well, so you're not lagging behind as a team member. And she thought that the most appropriate end for this would be a smiley face. Instead of including emoji, she decided to just type the shortcut for smiley face, which is column, and then close in parentheses. And once she did, it was automatically replaced by Microsoft Teams into the smiley face. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. State-of-the-art skills, tips, tricks and techniques we share with you here on online training for everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. Patricia and I are working on the project to create video for our Flagman product. We are the only two members in this project, and we've identified two work streams for which we created channels, create video and market video. We are a manufacturing company, and we do not have any video creation capabilities, as we're trying to focus on the things we do best, which is manufacture products. Based on recommendation from our boss, John, we're using procurement strategy where we will hire a new vendor to create a new video for us. To do that, we will create requests for proposal. John also suggested that we use existing relationship with our current marketing company to make updates to the website, upload this video onto YouTube channel, and publish it on the social media. Even though it was my initial idea to create this video for our Flagman product, John decided to assign Patricia as a team lead. In the current organizational hierarchy, we appears with Patricia because we both report to John. But Patricia worked for company for longer, and she has more experience working with external vendors, which is extremely important for this particular project. In fact, the strategy was identified and created by Patricia. She discussed it with John, and John agreed on the approach. And in fact, the strategy worked extremely well for us, as you will see. And I was excited at the end to see that Patricia became a member of the team. Patricia had decided that it's a good idea to capture our strategy in Microsoft Teams. Even though there are a lot of options, she decided that the best place for the strategy would be Wiki. When you're using Microsoft Teams and you click on the channel, by default, you have access to three tabs, Posts, Files, and Wikis. Posts typically represent information exchange between team members. Files represents files that you're collaborating on. And Wikis represent something more or less permanent. Patricia had created a Wiki page and called it Project Procurement Strategy. For video procurement strategy, she identified four steps. Identify vendors, create requests for proposal, RFP, submit requests for proposals to all the vendors, and then review RFPs and select the vendor. Initially, Patricia wanted to capture marketing strategy here as well, but then she realized that we have a separate channel to market the video. So she went to Market Video, Wiki section, and here she created a marketing strategy. She developed three-step marketing strategy. First of all, we will be using an existing marketing company to market the video. Then, we will market the video on company's website, and this is where the company will help us post the link. We also ask them to help us upload this video to company's YouTube channel. And last but not least, is that we'll market this video on the company's social media. Patricia finished developing the strategy toward the end of the day, and she was so excited that she decided to ask me for the feedback. She figured I wouldn't know where she put the strategy, so she decided to copy links to both strategies and share those links in the post. Microsoft Teams allows you to get the link to any particular item inside the Teams. To do that, you click on the three dots and select Copy Link. To make it easy for me, Patricia captured both links in Notepad, and then she went into the General channel, posted something for me. Patricia wrote me a message 
and was about to paste the link right into the text. When she posted, she realized that she only included one link. So she had a choice now, either start a new conversation or reply to that particular topic that she just covered. She decided to reply because that made more sense. This is still part of the same conversation. She just wanted to include additional link. And this is exactly what she did. When I logged in into Teams with my account, I see that there's something in general channel that I need to pay attention to. So I clicked on the general tab and I see that my name is highlighted here. I read the message from Patricia and was very thankful that she included the links because when I click on the link, it takes me directly to that place where information is located. I don't have much experience of procuring different vendors, but I recalled that one of our manufacturing projects is working on the government contract and government contract requires us following special rules when we hire external vendors. So I decided to add a note and communicate this information to Patricia. Microsoft Teams provides excellent collaboration capabilities. So I decided to click on the show section conversation and type my notes. I tried to find Patricia by name in the system, but I couldn't. This is what I saw as a suggestion on line training user two. It wasn't the top priority for me at the moment. So I decided to capture this as a screen print using keyboard shortcut Windows Shift S. So I can tell about this later to Patricia. I reread this sentence before sending it to Patricia. I might be totally wrong here, as my memory is bad lately. Let's make sure that we follow all guidelines on the government contract here. As if I remember correctly, they had special requirements on how to procure the vendors. Patricia and I both work remotely today. It would be easy to say something like this in the office when I see her face to face. But in remote setting is much harder to communicate any emotions, especially if you have uncertainty of what actually it is. So I decided to use emoji features of uh, Microsoft Teams to communicate my feelings. I went ahead and added smiley face after the first sentence. So this way Patricia probably wouldn't be offended if I'm wrong. Having emojis, animated GIFs and stickers allows you to communicate your emotional state with your team members much better. And this is available in a lot of places in Microsoft Teams. I posted and went ahead to look at the second strategy that Patricia developed. Again, I was really thankful that she included the link here because this allowed me to immediately get into the right place. I liked what she wrote. I was really impressed. And I decided to thank her for all the hard work that she did. I decided to communicate this in two posts. First one would be, looks good to me, exclamation mark. Then I wrote the second statement. Thanks for taking the lead and doing this work. Second statement was kind of plain, so I decided to include the gift along with my statement. Microsoft Teams allows you to include stickers and animated gifts, so I decided to search among those to see what would supplement my message the best. When I typed thank you in animated gift search bar, I saw a lot of good messages, so I decided to use the first one. This is probably the best one. I also decided to check stickers. There was nothing available to thank somebody in the sticker section. So I decided to stick with what just found out in animated GIF section. I felt that Patricia did a lot of work and this is the least I can do. So I decided to go ahead and send the message. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure that you get it in the future. We are working on the project together and using Microsoft Teams. Patricia is a team lead on the project and Vadim is the team member. Both Patricia and Vadim report to John. We've identified two main work streams for the project. First one is to create the video, and second one is to market the video. Our strategy is to find a new vendor to create a video, and use an existing vendor to market the video. To be compliant with laws and regulations, we are required to create a request for proposal, reach out to the vendors, evaluate request for proposal, and then select the vendor. It is very formal process. And in the end, we would need to be able to explain the results to whoever might be asking questions. Because both team members work remote, we decided to use collaborating features of Microsoft Teams to develop requests for proposal together. To do that, Patricia navigated to create video channel, clicked on files and clicked on start new document. Because request for proposal is the word document, she chose word document. And she named it request for proposal DOCX. Microsoft Teams provides phenomenal file collaboration capabilities. It has built-in versions of Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint Online right inside Microsoft Teams. 
and it has various different ways allowing you to collaborate. You can use comments, you can use conversations, and you can also use version control. On top of that, it auto saves the information so you don't have to be worried about losing anything when you're using Microsoft Teams. In fact, when Patricia was developing this slide, she realized that she missed version control. But then she realized that this is an existing, powerful feature of Microsoft Office, which is also available in Microsoft Teams. Patricia had decided to start with the company's template for request for proposal. In addition to setting up template, Patricia started populating it, and she included some of the information that was obvious for this particular request for proposal. She just typed it in, and Microsoft Teams saved this Word online document without asking the user. She also decided to turn on tracking. To do that, she navigated to Review tab in Microsoft Word, selected Track Changes, and selected For Everyone. After doing all of this, she decided to share the initial draft version with Vadim. The best way to share would be to select the document, click Copy Link, and then navigate to the General section where you have Main Conversation, and target somebody by starting the new conversation. Once she's done typing the message, she can just use Control v to paste the link. Because Patricia targeted Vadim in her conversation request, when Vadim logged in into his system, he saw that there are two messages in the general channel. Vadim didn't know where the file was. All he needed to do is just click on the link. There are two main ways how you can collaborate on the document in Microsoft Teams. If you're putting your feedback inside the document, you have an option of using version control or using comments. If you are collaborating on the outside of the document, you can put your feedback on the channel messages inside Microsoft Teams. It is always a good option to discuss with your team members what is the preferred option and which option they would like to use, especially if you have a large number of people on the team. This would allow you to organize the feedback, centralize it, and review it effectively. Vadim read the document and he decided that he can add more content based on what he knew about the project. Before adding the content though, he decided to format the document a little bit by including the bullets into some of the sections. After looking at the bullets though, he decided to change them into just regular numbers. Because what if vendor will decide to reference particular requirement? It would be so much easier to do if each requirement will have its unique number. And he was really glad that this was Microsoft Word where they were doing the editing with Patricia. Because Microsoft Word provides all of these capabilities. He even added the numbering in the sections where there was only one item, as his thought process was that maybe, as they worked together with Patricia, there would be more than just one item there. In addition to what Patricia had, Vadim also added a couple items in the evaluation metrics and submission requirements. For evaluation metrics, Vadim added that video should describe key benefits of the product. And the second one he added, video should focus on the product and show as much of the product in the scenes as possible. He thought that this was something important for vendor to realize, as some of the commercials and videos created by the vendor focus on the actors instead of focusing on the product itself. He also added that the video should be in the 4K format. We can always downsize the format, but we cannot upsize it without losing the quality. Vadim was so happy that Patricia turned on track changes in the document, because he can see what she wrote, and he can clearly see the changes that he made. He was very impressed that you can hover on top of the text that was written and you will see the date and timestamp and who made the change. He also recalled that the legal team was always requiring marketing team to include some specific statements for every video that company makes. But instead of writing it inside the document, he decided to use comments features, comments feature of Microsoft Word Online to communicate this to Patricia. To do that, he clicked on the comments button. He wrote, do we need to include legal requirements as we did in our previous videos? Should we specify the text for the vendor so they include it as text inside the video or as a voice at the end of the video? And then he posted the comment. He was very happy with the results and he decided to communicate back to Patricia that he's done with his review. To do that, he navigated back and he decided to write back to Patricia in the general channel. He wrote, I had a chance to look. Great start but I think we may need to engage our legal team. Let me know your thoughts." And then he sent the message. When Patricia received this note, she decided to look at the changes Vadim made. 
She clicked on the link that she herself posted, and she can clearly see all the changes that he made, because the track changes control was on. She also saw the comment that Vadim added, and she thought that this comment made sense, so she wrote back to Vadim. She wrote, great catch, let's have a meeting with them soon to review the document, and she posted this comment right in the word online. As a next step, Patricia decided to review the changes Vadim had made. She decided to review changes one by one and accept or reject them as needed. The first change she was very happy with, so she right-click on the change and selected Accept Insertion. This made this change permanent. She was also very happy with all the numbers that Vadim added, so she decided to accept those changes as well. And finally, she was also very happy with his catch about 4K format. This is the new format and creating video in the new format will help it last for longer in the social media as well as in other marketing channel where it could be used. So she decided to accept this change as well. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. Vadim is working with Patricia on the video creation project for the Flagman product. Our project sponsor John suggested that we plan some tasks for the future. John would like to be able to track project execution and see how well we're doing. Patricia had decided to use Asana based on her research. To add Asana, all you need to do is click plus sign, search for Asana. Patricia already had project created in Asana, so all she needed to do is just to select the project. When this checkbox is checked, it will send a message to other team members to notify them about new tab that has been added. And the last step in the process is to click the save button. Integration with Asana provides you with multiple capabilities. You can create new Asana task, you can link to the project and get notified about updates on this particular project. And also you can adjust your notification settings. Using help command, you can also view list of possible commands related to Asana. Asana projects are typically organized in three major buckets. To do bucket allows you to plan. These are the tasks that you're planning to do in the future. Actively doing, is the doing bucket and then the tasks that you've completed go into the done bucket. For example, as we were working with Patricia on the request for proposal, Patricia created three different tasks. Create RFP, send RFP to vendors and select vendor. When she added Asana tab into Microsoft Teams, Asana has very similar breakdown for work in Asana app inside Microsoft Teams. You see three different sections, to do section, doing section and done section. As we started working on create RFP task with Patricia, she moved it from to do section to the doing section. And this change was immediately reflected in Asana app inside Microsoft Teams. Asana plugin has limited capabilities. You can only add new tasks and you cannot manage the tasks right inside Microsoft Teams. For example, when Patricia was reviewing the list of tasks, she realized that she missed one task. And this is the task to identify the vendors themselves. Before we can send RFP to vendors, we need to know who those vendors are. She typed the task in the Add Task section and clicked Add Task. The task got added into To Do section and it showed up in both Microsoft Teams as well as in Asana itself. When we were just starting our mission, we wanted to pick the name that would best describe our values. And this is the main reason why we picked how to analyze data.net because the core of our mission is covering questions how and why in every video that we make. Make sure you consider this when you're making your own decision whether to subscribe to the channel or not. Because online training for everyone is one of the few channels that provides you with the real answers. I am working with Patricia on the marketing project. Both of us report to John. As we started getting more actively involved in the create video phase of the project, Patricia realized that we will have a lot of meetings. She also realized that we need a lot of collaboration with other people to be successful. Based on Patricia's experience, there are three essential criteria to be successful with all the meetings. You need to define an objective for the meeting, you need to prepare an agenda for the meeting, and you need to capture the decisions and outcomes. Patricia did a little bit of research and realized that all of these functions could be done within Microsoft Teams. Patricia and myself work remotely, as we can hold virtual meetings. And based on her research, the best app that could be used within Microsoft Teams is OneNote app. To add OneNote app, you need to click on the plus sign and then find the app. You can either create new notebook 
or use existing notebook, which was predefined for you. Patricia decided to use an existing notebook. She selected it and clicked Save. First thing you need to do is to create a new section. As her first section, Patricia decided to create template for meeting minutes. Now within the section, you can create multiple pages. If you expand the selection, you will see your section and then you have untitled page. Once you start typing, it will give page a name. To be effective with OneNote, you need to understand OneNote's structure. OneNote consists of four main objects, notebook, section, page, and subpage. The structure is hierarchical. You can have multiple sections inside one notebook. You can have multiple pages inside the section, and you can have multiple subpages within the page. Because Patricia selected existing notebook that comes by default within Microsoft Teams, she can organize sections as project milestones. The sections might be create video and market video. The pages might represent meeting minutes for each milestone, and subpages could contain some additional information. Following this approach, Patricia created three sections, template for meetings, create video, and market video. Template for video contained one page, template for meetings. This page contained the template of all the most important information related to the meeting that should be captured. Patricia also started getting ready to our first meeting. She copied the template and she pasted the template into the notes that she started making. After she pasted the template, she moved the vendors she preliminary identified into the objective and agenda section. She also used features of OneNote, like bullets, to make list of vendors very clear. When Vadim logged in into his account, he saw that Patricia added a new tab on top of the channel. The reason he did this, because she selected the check mark that made the post right in the general channel. Vadim can access OneNote app either by clicking on the link that Patricia shared or by clicking on the tab that has OneNote app. All team members have access to this new app and can work on the meeting minutes together. I have a question for you. Do you have a better way of solving the challenge that was presented in this video? Could you please share your thoughts in the comment section of this video? I am working with Patricia on the marketing project to create video for our flagman product. We both report to John. Our company doesn't have any video creation capabilities, so we've identified three vendors we would like to work with to create video. Maximan Marketing Group, Rinaldi Video Creation, and Toriox Advertising Agency. These are the best companies in our area that specialize in marketing video creation. Patricia and I already put together RFP, Request for Proposal document. We used Microsoft Word and created it in Microsoft Teams. John suggested that we present our project to the vendors. To do that, we would like to schedule a meeting with them. We would like to learn about the vendors, would like to tell them about the project that we're working on, and would like to share RFP with them and answer any questions they might have. Patricia did the research and she recommends we use Microsoft Teams for the entire RFP process. All vendors, just like us, work remotely today. We can use exciting features of Microsoft Teams. We can use Microsoft Teams for real-time collaboration. We can do private chats. We can do public conversations. We can do audio and video calls. And we can do virtual meetings all inside Microsoft Teams. In order to best prepare for the meeting with vendors, we would need to put together PowerPoint presentation. And we're planning to use features of Microsoft Teams that allow us to work together in the same file to get the presentation ready. Microsoft Teams has native capabilities to work with PowerPoints. You have multiple ways to collaborate. You can do comments, you can do conversations, and you can enable version control. PowerPoint also automatically saves files, so you don't have to click Save button to protect what you have already created, as you would have to do it in the desktop version of PowerPoint. Our project has multiple phases, and each phase is represented by the channel in Microsoft Teams. RFP phase is part of Create Video channel, so the most logical place for this PowerPoint file would be in the Files tab of the Create Video channel. We already have request for proposal here, so all we need to do to create a presentation is to click New, PowerPoint Presentation, you type the name of the file you're trying to create and click Create button. Here, just like in regular PowerPoint application on the desktop, you have access to the ribbon bar and all the tabs, as well as you have access to the designer and you can pick different themes and different designs for your presentation. I was very excited about all these capabilities and decided to share with Patricia that I put together a template for the future presentation. I copied the link to the file using copy link feature for the files section inside Microsoft Teams. 
and went back to the post section and started a new conversation with Patricia. I typed the message and wanted to make sure that Patricia is the one that will receive notification. So I used at and then Patricia's name to make sure she gets notification. My message was, hi Patricia, here is the template for vendor presentation I have started. And I pasted the link to the PowerPoint file I put together. Little did I know that Patricia had something better in mind. When she received this message from me, she responded, thanks Vadim, great start. But I would recommend that we use an existing company's RFP template as a starting point. Let's just upload it and collaborate. Most of the times, companies have pre-built templates. So instead of designing something new from scratch, you can just upload the document to the files area inside Microsoft Teams and collaborate. For example, this is the sample of the vendor presentation template that could be used. It already follows company's guidelines, it has company logo, and typically has a lot of slides already in place. When I received this message, I was so thankful that I work with Patricia and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So I definitely liked this message and shared with Patricia using the features of Microsoft Teams that help you share the emotions of how you feel at the moment. You have some other emotions that you can share here based on what you feel. This is especially helpful when you work in a remote environment and you don't regularly see people face to face. It is also helpful when you work with offshore teams and the vendors that you may never see at all. To upload the document into the Files section, all you need to do is navigate to the Files tab and click the Upload button. Here you have a way of uploading just individual file or the group of folders to build the hierarchical structure. Because I use Windows, I can preview the file before uploading it. All you need to do is just click on the file and then you can scroll within the file just to make sure that you're uploading the right document. After Upload, File shows up as just a brand new file. Because we are planning to use this template instead of the other one, I felt that we needed to do something with the file to avoid confusion. You can either delete the file by using the features of the Teams and selecting the Delete option, or you can rename the file, which is what I would like to do. This way you keep the file, but you give it such a name that eliminates the confusion. So I gave this file a name backup dash do not use dash and then kept the original file name. Because the file that I uploaded is a PowerPoint file. When I click on it, I have all the editing features available to me to edit the file. In addition to being able to use comments inside the file, I also decided to add the review features and track all the changes. So I went to the review tab looking for familiar turn on revision control changes button. But the cool thing about PowerPoint Online is that it automatically tracks all the changes. So you don't need to turn anything on. Once changes are made, all you need to do if you want to see the changes is to use this Show Changes button. For example, if I update one of the goals for the project and the text that I would add will be Increase Awareness About Flagman Product when Patricia logs in and comes with her account to look at this document. This is what she would see on her toolbar. She would see that Vadim is currently editing the document. She would see the comments if I have any comments. She can start the conversation with whoever is editing the document. And if she navigates to the Review tab and clicks Show Changes, she would be able to see what I'm currently working on by simply clicking my name and clicking Go to Location. And it will show exact element of PowerPoint slide which I'm working on. Even though we have screen sharing capabilities inside Microsoft Teams, this type of organization and feedback inside PowerPoint allows us just to be on the phone line and work on the same document together if necessary. This might be very helpful, for example, if our internet connection is not reliable. Patricia can also add comments. She just needs to click the comments button and type a new comment. Once she types and posts the comment, I will be able to see the comment in my view of the PowerPoint presentation. It would show for Vadim that Patricia Jackson is also editing. And if I enable comments, I will see all the comments that she makes. Using comments is only one way to collaborate on a document. If I disable comments and switch to conversation, this is more dynamic way and this is something where you don't even need a phone line to collaborate on the document. For example, Patricia can specifically target Vadim to trigger notification on my end. All she needs to do is just use the add sign and it will show you the list of users that's available in your team. Vadim can see the notification Patricia triggered in the activity section of Microsoft Teams. The message from Patricia will show up right in the feed. Hi Vadim, can you please edit slide 5 and I'll take care of slide 3. 
And here you have ability, as usual, to confirm that you've received the message. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. Patricia and I are working on the marketing project for our Flagman product. Patricia is a team lead and she also plays the role of project manager. We both are peers and we both report to John in organizational structure. John suggested that we look at the risks that might be associated with our project execution. John also suggested that we create a risk register where we will be able to track risk severity, risks likelihood, and our treatment strategy for the particular risk. Based on Patricia's research, the best way to create risk registry would be to use the Files tab right inside Microsoft Teams. By default, there are three tabs for each channel, Posts, Files, and Wiki. Most of the time you operate in the Posts tab, but if you would like to create a shareable file, the best way to do it is by using the Files tab. So when you navigate to Files tab and click New, you can choose what type of file you would like to create. And for Risk Register, the best type of the file would be an Excel workbook. After you give file a name, you can click Create button and this will create brand new Excel document. Microsoft Teams will also open web-based interface. You can edit the file and add additional content right away. Typically, an effective Risk Register consists of at least five different elements. Risk ID, which uniquely identifies the risk, risk description, risks severity, risks likelihood, and treatment strategy. Because the document you create is native Microsoft Excel document, you can highlight the first row to spotlight the headers. You might also consider changing the sheet name to reflect what's actually stored in the sheet. Another helpful thing you can do is create a separate tab which would describe what type of values are you expecting in each particular column. To do that, you just need to click on the plus sign and populate the new sheet with the new values. For example, you can call a separate tab in this Excel workbook and call it description. Here you would describe the values for risk severity, risks likelihood, and risk level. Risk severity values might be acceptable, tolerable, undesirable, or intolerable. Risk likelihood values might be improbable, possible, or probable. And risk levels might be low, medium, high, and very high. Some teams might also consider organizing their risk values into the three column data. You can have value for the risk, which would assign numeric value for each risk severity, for example, risk likelihood or risk level. Then you will have a short description and then you will have long description for the risk. There are multiple benefits for this approach. First of all, it will gravitate everybody on the team to better understand what type of risk descriptions and what type of risk values they should select. It will also allow you to do some calculations with risks. For example, if you would like to determine what is really high in terms of the risk, you can do a calculated value and multiply values for the risk severity, risk likelihood, and risk level to get to the calculated value for each risk. Once you define the structure for your risk register, you can start entering the risks. For example, let's compare two risks that we've entered into our risk registry. Selected distribution channels, risk number one. Selected distribution channels for the marketing video will not reach the target audience. And now compare it to the second risk. Vendors will not complete the video before launch date for Flagman product. Let's first assign risk severity to both risks. For the first one, the risk severity is intolerable. Basically what it means is that the entire effort of creating the video and distributing the video was done for nothing. If we choose wrong channels to distribute the video for our clients, there's no reason to do this project in the first place. And value 4 for risk severity reflects that. Second risk we can classify into undesirable category. Even if video is not completed before the launch of the Flagman product, we still have other marketing mechanisms that we can use to market the product. Using similar logic, we can assign risk likelihood and risk level values. Once we've assigned all the values in columns C, D, and E, we can calculate the actual value behind the risk. To do that, we can use formulas in Microsoft Excel. One of the best ways to calculate the actual value behind the risk is multiplication. If we multiply columns C, D, and E values, we will get to the actual value behind the risk. So for the first one, the value is 24. Let's compare it to the second risk. To do that, we can copy the value and paste it into the cell F3. And for the second risk, the actual value behind the risk is 12. There are three main strategies teams can use to deal with risks. Team can accept the risk. This option basically tells, yes, we know about the risk, but we're not gonna do anything about this. We're just gonna live with that. You can transfer the risk. 
There are multiple ways to transfer. The best example of transferring the risk would be purchasing insurance. You can also transfer the risk to the external provider. You can put some special clauses in the contract to make provider responsible if this particular risk materializes. External vendors typically understand that and they charge higher premium for the higher risk contracts. And the last strategy is risk remediation. This is the most frequently used strategy because in this option, team has ability to control the risk, manage the risk and take actions. Now, when the risk register is in place, you can just click on the three dot button, copy the link and share it with everybody on the team. It might be a good idea to conduct periodic risk reviews as part of the status meetings. You can also download this risk register template by using link in the description of this video. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.